Julie, are you ready? We got the Attorney General of your Commonwealth. This is very exciting. We love Jason Miares. We do, um, uh, for many reasons, uh, but mostly because he's actually doing what he said he would do when he yeah. ran for Attorney General. Imagine that. Mr. Attorney General, thanks for joining us, sir. It's an honor to be with you all this morning. Thanks so much for having me. A big part of your campaign, sir, that we heard uh, regularly on this program when you were running for office, and certainly uh, much of your focus since you've been sworn in, has been to try to re-implement the actual prosecution of criminals, the sentences that have already been stand, uh, handed down uh, or, or laid out by statute in Richmond that so many Commonwealth attorneys and prosecutors and judges seem to be ignoring. And sadly, yesterday in our headlines, we saw the direct results of this. Gerald Brevard, he is the suspect in the killing of these five homeless people in D.C. and New York. Turns out he had already been uh, arrested and convicted for abduction and assault in Fairfax County in 2020. And instead of the normal five to 40 year sentence, he was given by Commonwealth Attorney Steve Descano an 11 month sentence. So he was out on the street and now he's murdering people allegedly. This is a perfect example. What can we do about this? How can we get on top of this right now, Mr. Attorney General? Well, I mean, it just goes to show you that eliminating criminal justice is not criminal justice reform. And, uh, you know, sometimes we hear about these policy issues you maybe hear about and you think it doesn't really impact people's daily lives. But in this case, you had a situation where now you had five individuals that have been shot, two are tragically killed by someone the, that has been classified as a serial killer. And just to be clear, my understanding from my, my office is this individual is already out on a federal robbery uh, uh, charge. He was on probation for that. Gets picked up for uh, abduction, a burglary. Gets his charge reduced to a misdemeanor. Um, just so everybody understands, and every prosecutor knows this. An 11 month charge means they spend five and a half months in sentence. You spend about half of your time on uh, based on good time behavior, and when you spend time in jail uh, in Virginia as uh, compared to prison. So this was they knew this was going to be an individual that was going to spend about five and a half months in prison and burglary and abduction in connection with assault. I mean, these are charges, uh, burglary up to five years, abduction uh, can be a, a sentence up to life sentence in Virginia, uh, depending on the circumstances. And so you have an example of what I have said is a huge problem, this criminal first, victim last mindset of uh, prosecutors that, and I've said before, that naively think good intentions guarantee good results. And so, uh, in my opinion, these a lot of these prosecutors you could classify are just are, are failing at their jobs and now people are dying and uh, to tragic consequences as a result. It appears that they're utilizing this this idea of prosecutorial discretion, but it doesn't seem very discretionary, Mr. Attorney General. Is it time to re-examine the ability of these prosecutors to to just sort of waive the statute and waive what's supposed to happen here because they're just what's the point of passing a law in richmond about crime if a commonwealth attorney and prosecutor's office can just ignore it you, you hit the nail on the head and this is what you've seen over the last uh, several years these far left groups have spent uh, by, by my calculation close to 30 million dollars in these different district attorney and commonwealth attorneys races around the country and uh, for pennies on the dollars what they've been able to say is listen we don't need to change the composition of your state house or your general assembly or your governor to make sure certain crimes are just dropped we could just elect district attorneys in different areas around the country to then make the determination we're just not going to prosecute uh, certain crimes regardless of what uh, the general assembly thinks and so in this case I know that uh, Toscano has dropped uh, prosecuting um, shoplifting. You had obviously very well known in Manhattan. Uh, you, they elected Alvin Bragg. He released that social justice memo saying they wouldn't seek any prison sentences for any crimes such as armed robbery or drug dealing and burglaries. And not surprisingly, since he's been elected, 72 out of the 77 police precincts have seen an increase in crime. I mean, Fairfax has seen its its murder rate skyrocket under Toscano and um, and crime increase. So. Not surprisingly, uh, this idea that you could be lenient on violent criminals is somehow going to lower crime. It's hopelessly naive. It may be well-intentioned. The results speak for themselves. And so I think you're seeing a collective pushback. And listen, I, I think part of the reason why I got elected and, and my dear friend Winston Sears and Glenn Youngkin did as well is on this issue. This was a huge issue. People were coming up to us saying, we, don't, we used to feel safe in our community. We don't feel safe. 
and uh, it's leading to tragic headlines like this, and, and I think people are frustrated, but we're ready to make some changes. Unfortunately, the legislation that I had introduced giving me some additional authority um, when prosecutors had failed to do their jobs, it died in the Democratic State Senate. Uh, and so, um, you know, elections have consequences, and, and we'll, we'll have the, the state Senate will be up next year. Um, but they're going to have more headlines, tragically, I think we're going to see as a result of some of these lenient far-left prosecutors that are just not doing their job. Well, General Mayeris, you are absolutely right that, that people are concerned about crime. But as you know, uh, parents are also very concerned about education in Virginia. And I live in Alexandria, Virginia. And we had a strange announcement uh, from ACPS, Alexandria City Public Schools, has now launched, as part of their equity initiative, has launched this new associates program so you can essentially get your high school diploma and at the same time get an associates this is great i think this is amazing i think it you know could reduce college costs uh for a lot of kids who who, who whose families struggle but unfortunately this is only open for black and hispanic students no whites can apply um does this comport with uh, the state's anti-discrimination laws this seems seems kind of boldly racist that listen, I'm going to take a look at that. Uh, you know, I've said before, equity equity without excellence is emptiness, and um, uh, and it sounds like on its surface a great program, but for their saying uh, that Asian students uh, need not apply, and, yeah. and anyone who's not either Latino or or uh, a Black uh, Virginian can apply, and so that that is on its face. Uh, Stupefying to me, and uh, you know, I've said before that you know, anti-Semitism is the world's oldest form of bigotry, and it seems like the only acceptable form of bigotry that's practiced by government entities today is discrimination against Asian Americans. Um, and so, uh, I'm going to take a look at this extreme. When was this announced? Is this just announced just a couple this week? weeks ago? Just a couple weeks ago, I can a couple weeks ago I can send okay. you some information. Uh, it's very concerning to the folks in Alexandria, and frankly, nationwide, because. I think this is a trend among some of these woke superintendents and woke school boards um, as part of equity to create programs that only serve certain kids. We certainly want those kids served, but not at the exclusion of others. So I'm so glad you're going to take a look at this. The best way to stop discrimination by race is stopping discrimina discriminating people by race. Right. How about that, Carson? Right. This is You are so controversial <laughs> with that kind of view. All right. Thank you, uh, Attorney General Jason Miari. It's always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Market Watch published an article comparing your investing strategy to the way you drive on a long road trip. Not here.